Ahoy there, Pathfinders! Welcome to the Season 7 preview video. The list of changes to come to Atlas Season 7 are pretty long. Some of them, like portals, have already been covered by other creators. You can find a link to both of these videos at the end of this one and in the description down below. Before I start this video, I'd like to remind everyone that Atlas is an early access game, and all of these features are subject to change, so let's just get right to it. Of all the changes coming this wipe, the biggest are those to the map. Since other creators have already covered these changes in depth, I'll be touching on some details they may have missed. First off, in a little bit of a disappointment, you will not actually be able to travel between regions edge to edge. You will have to use portals. The team tells me this has been changed due to technical limitations and for future plans. The second and final detail I want to touch on about the map that was not mentioned in other videos is that, aside from expanded villages, free parts have also had their level cap removed. This means no more having to tough it out on overpopulated, lawless islands just to learn your basic skills. This change should make it much easier if you're brand new to the game or just starting this season. The second among these major changes is the total overhaul of the leveling experience. At present, the base level cap has been raised from 52 to 77, with a max level lowered to 110 after all discoveries. This means you'll no longer have to get all the power stones to reach 300 HP. So this change really sees balance in favor of underpowered and newer players. The skill tree has also been totally reworked to be more coherent and slimmed down. The skill point costs of abilities have also been overhauled to make it impossible for any one player to have all skills. This means you will have to plan on having different players in different roles. Aside from these changes, the firearms tree, music tree, and unarmed skill trees have all been removed and their skills redistributed. Upon first leveling your character, you'll find access to all skill trees is now accessed through the survival tree. These come after the new keystone skills, naturalism, which contains cooking, farming, beast mastery, and first aid, combat, which contains combat skills, and awards the blackjack and brass knuckles, and finally construction, which contains the construction and shipbuilding skill trees. Other major changes to skills are as followed. Under the basics, you will now unlock bows and stone arrows. Loom is now unlocked in basics of building. Tannery is now unlocked in advanced tools. Chemicals and tanning is now called chemicals and explosives and contains the mortar and pestle along with everything it traditionally produces. Several buff skills have been removed or condensed across all trees. Beast Mastery has been slimmed down and streamlined with breeding and taming now occupying a single skill unlock. Ballista is now unlocked as part of the Capstone Bow skill under the reworked Ranged Weapons tree. Firearms likewise are now unlocked under the Ranged Weapons tree. Stout Liver has finally been moved to the Cooking tree. The Farming tree has been slimmed down, crafting the grill no longer falsely appears to need skills from the farming tree. Overeating tolerance has been moved to the piracy tree, which has also seen some other changes to make it much more PvP focused. Diving attachment has been moved to the shipwright tree along with all other sail skills also being condensed into the shipwright skill. The schooner and brigantine have been moved to their own skill unlocked called the merchant ships skill along with Galleons getting their own capstone skill. Speaking of ships, there are three brand new ships coming to Atlas. The first, called the Cog. When I first made this video, I hadn't really got the chance to play with this boat yet. I had to actually go back and edit this part in. In all honesty, the Cog is a very good ship. All the ships released with this patch have exactly the same base stats, with the exception of their modular points, but the COG really stands out. It's got some drawbacks. First of all, it's not very combat capable. At most, it will be carrying two cannons. 
a single one on each broadside, or it'll be able to fit two rowing modules. This ship seems very inspired by the Caravel ship mod. It handles and reaches very similar, ridiculous speeds. When you consider its size, weight capacity, and overall speed with rowers, its extremely cheap cost, it's easy to see why this boat will be everywhere this season. This ship seems to be the dev's way of replacing the early game schooner that everyone misses and hates that costs 5k gold. Even late game, if you're bound to do something greasy, it's gonna be in one of these guys. The COG has six modular points, three of which are permanently bound to the ramming bow. This number appears to be a mistake, however. The COG has a standard for the season 9k weight capacity and four sail points, allowing it the same sail setup as a schooner. I'm not going to mention this for the rest of the boats as they all basically have the same thing. Except the Carrick will be sporting 26 mod points and the Harrier has the same amount of mod points. Secondly, the Carrick! A ship the devs describe as a blank canvas with which to attach any modules you see fit. It seems to be just slightly smaller than a broadsider. It also boasts a ramming bow and is slightly more maneuverable than its big brother. Seen here with six rowing modules and two diving bells, this ship seems like it's meant to be the modular version of the schooner, boasting identical sail points and ultimately holding the same amount of guns for the time being. Lastly, the Harrier. No, this is not the flying ship from the cover art. Instead, this is a smaller, less armed vessel than its big brother, the mortar ship, that boasts increased both speed and maneuverability. Seen here with its optimum sail setup, you'll be seeing a lot more of these on the seas this coming season. Back on land, new additions have taken on a Mesoamerican vibe, and this patch seems to have more than one reference to Huitzilopochtli, the Aztec god of war, sun, and sacrifice. First, we have the Manacutl, a new sword-type weapon from the Mexicas. Boasting similar stats to the sword, its overhead strike causes profuse bleeding. To create this weapon, you will need to have both knowledge of the old ones and one-handed studies unlocked. Additionally, players will be able to craft the very same armor worn by the Army of the Damned. Granting similar stats to plate armor, it supplies additional buffs against heat. You will likewise need secrets of armor and knowledge of the old ones unlocked to craft this spooky new set. New constructs are coming our way, the first of which is referred to in-game as the Ritual Pedestal. When placed in range of an Altar of the Damned, it will generate a charge up to 300. With it, you can presently perform one of three rituals. The first of which, Unnatural Fog, which as of my testing, rolls back the server, so that one may not be in the final build. The next available ritual is called the Ritual of Sacrifice. Starting this ritual will cast a sphere around your island and an audible sound. And additionally, it will cause all creatures and NPCs and players to drop a heart when killed. Finally, we have Raise the Dead, which for 50 hearts generated in the previous ritual will allow you to spawn a tamed warrior of the damned at the same level as the summoner. The next of the possible constructs is the cursed temple. Built in two parts, this is a powerful construction that any company is going to want to unlock as soon as possible. Inside the temple you will find a number of study rooms. Each of these allows for construction of blueprinted items up to masterwork at a random quality. The quality of the blueprints within is on a random roll and changes every few hours. You can build anything from ship parts, armor, weapons, and even food depending on which of the study rooms you fill your temple with. Additionally, there is also an astrology study room that gives company members on the grid a sextant buff. However, at the time of making this video, it was currently glitched, so I wasn't able to show that. Keep in mind, this structure is wide open, so you may want to dedicate some defenses to it. Additionally, there are two more constructions that seem to be related to future rituals. First, the Voodoo Totem. Already shown in Redbeard's journal, the totem allows 
all company members, including tames and NPCs, to consume raw or rotten meat. This monument is constructed in three parts, and as of my testing, placing the final piece is a little... weird. You have to cancel and re-enable placement to get the final piece to go on. Uh, with the second monument, feeding crabs is going to get a lot easier because the burial mound, once finished, causes all creatures killed on the island to drop rotten meat when harvested. This one, likewise, has the same placement issues, but I didn't get a shot of this. Finally, we have the Songstone. As mentioned in other videos, activating the Songstone will create a verse book, which can only be created once a month per company, so you'll want to guard this close, because anyone can take it from you. The verse book contains a number of songs that apply a given buff. When a song is played, the verse book will consume the subsequent number of related charges, and once depleted, your verse book can be charged at a song stone. In order to craft all of these new items, it must be done inside of a smithy of the damned, which is constructed inside of an altar of the damned. Almost all of these items require cursed bone chips. Cursed bone chips is provided by transient nodes, which are nodes that will move around a single island on about a one-week basis. In order to find a transient node, you must first construct a transient tracker inside a forge. Once added to your hotbar, the transient tracker will point in the direction of a transient node, and its gem will change from blue to bright green, depending on how close you are. Once you have found a transient node, indicated by the thick cloud and numerous fireflies, you can place the Grave Digger, which may be crafted in the smithy. You will also be able to raise the placement range up and down, making it far easier to place on top of cliffs. Living up to their name, transient nodes will move around the island on roughly a one-week timer, so you're going to want to plan your future island around this fact. That about does it for this preview review of the coming season. Just remember that everything shown above and mentioned is highly subject to change. While we're at it, be sure to check out the linked videos by Decoy and Scarvig linked here and down below. The new update goes live October 27th.